Good evening, everyone. Uh, we call the regular meeting on town council of Monday, October 18th, 2021 to order. Um, please rise. Prayer, Councillor Riley. As the events of today continue to unfold at the speed of light, we are seeking clarity and peace. Provide us with patience and kindness to move forward together. We come from many different backgrounds and knowledge sets, yet we are one in purpose for Enfield. We appreciate how each person here gave a valuable contribution despite the many challenges we faced as a council working through a pandemic these past two years. We are grateful for the thoughtful conversations and even some laughter we have shared together in this room. May what we've accomplished impact our lives, families, friends, and the town positively. As we depart, we pray that you'll be with us all, a source of hope and strength, and grant us peace in knowing we are pursuing a purpose greater than our own, and help us to make a difference in this world for the better. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry. Roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Riley? Here. Councilor Safraza? Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Here. Councilor Ungeyer? Here. Councilor Bosco? Absent. Councilor Sakala? Here. Councilor Crisati? Here. Councilor Hemler? Here. Mayor Ludwig? Here. Councilor Mangini? Here. Councilor Muller? Here. Ten members present, one absent. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, item number four on the agenda, the fire, evacu fire evacuation announcement. In case of a fire, we have an exit in the back of the building. Please orderly leave on either to the left or the right. We also have doors to our left. The audience is right. Please go out those doors. Then there's doors right in the hallway. Please go use those doors. Goes down the stairs and out into the parking lot in case of a fire. Moving on to item five, minutes of the preceding meeting, meetings. Um, special meeting, except October 4, 2021, to have a motion to approve. Second. By Councilor Muller, seconded second by Councilor uh, Ungeyer. Is there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions? A nine in favor, one abstention? Uh, the regular meeting of October 4, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? Second. Okay. Moved by Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Mangini. Is there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions? Ten in favor, zero against? Uh, we move on to item six, special guest. We uh, welcome Eagle Scout Troop 818, Aaron Ryan, excuse me, Aaron Ryan and Ryan Miller. Welcome, gentlemen. Please come on up. Hello. Welcome. It, it just make sure the button's on and just your name. And uh, I know you guys did some great projects and just take whoever wants to go first, go right ahead. Welcome. Hello. How you uh, doing? Uh, pretty good. Um, Welcome. Know, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Ryan Miller. As you've said, I'm from Troop A18 of Enfield, Connecticut. And we're both here to talk about our Eagle Scout projects. As for mine, I wanted to dedicate my project to a portion of my life that was very meaningful to me. So in turn, I dedicated my project to Henry Barnett Elementary School for making my early years of education supportive and fun. My project is a 16 by 20 foot pavilion that is placed behind this school and is to serve as an outdoor space for the kids. And, uh, sorry. Take your as, time, no worries, take your time. It's okay. Uh, as is the nature of an Eagle Scout project, I had to plan the fundraising and the building portions of the project. And for the fundraising, due to the COVID pandemic that we've had over the past year and a half-ish now, it's made it a little bit difficult to, it made it difficult to fundraise. So the way that I ended up deciding to fundraise was through a GoFundMe page in which I fundraised most of the money that I needed for my project. And then once things cleared up a little bit, I ended up partnering with the two moms on a mission who are some amazing people who helped uh, help me plan a person power tool bingo night for my project. And in total, I needed about $6,400 for the project. I ended up fundraising about $7,200 in total. After the fundraising was done, we got to, onto the construction, of which we dug out a space, poured out a concrete pad that is 18 by 22 feet. 
Uh, and then we built up the main structure out of pressure treated wood and it was roofed with asphalt shingles. And after the construction was done, uh, we had a de dedication ceremony to the school of which it, um, we talked, we signed the final part of the Eagle Scout workbook for the project. And I introduced uh, Tim the Hawk, who is a bird that's a part of the structure uh, to serve as a scarecrow for other birds staying. Uh, it's not showing the picture right now, but when it goes to the other slide for my stuff, it'll end, uh, you'll see Tim in one of the pictures. Um, and then on that same day, we had a check to the PTO for about $800 for the rest of the funding that we had for the project. And then in my current situation, I, my Eagle Scout workbook is turned into the Scout Council and I'm waiting for the approval for my board of review. Thank Very you. Good. Very good. Good evening. Um, my name is Aaron Ryan and I'm from Troop 818 as well. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ludwig and the Enfield Town Council for letting me present my project. Uh, as you can see, that is one of the bridges up there that uh, me and the rest of our troop were helping landscaping that day. Um, my project was to design and build six friendship bridges for all six elementary schools in Enfield. Uh, this project was in partnership with the Enfield Educational Resources for Children, or ERFC, and the Enfield Rotary Club. Tony Romano, manager of operations at the ERFC, has helped tremendously in this project and it would have been nowhere near as successful without him. Uh, the goal of these bridges is to um, teach children about the importance of friendship and the effects long-term and short-term of bullying. And uh, these bridges will play a key, key part in the curriculum by the ERFC to, uh, at the end of the curriculum, there'll be, it'll be a, it'll symbolize when they cross over uh, bridging the gap between, you know, friendship and the children. To design and build the bridges, I was given a basic plan and I had to modify the plan to have helped the bridges resist the elements and use by the children. Each bridge took about 12 to 15 hours of work to complete and a huge amount of help and uh, yeah, a huge amount of that was helped by my father and I can't thank him enough for that, as well as scouts and leaders and friends from our troops. The wood to construct the bridges was financed um, by a grant from the Enfield Rotary Club. However, installation and landscaping the materials I had to fundraise. I had to fundraise for the materials. Uh, Tony and I worked with the schools to find the locations and place the bridges. And if you drive by the elementary schools, you can easily see the bridges in the front of the schools from the road. Um, landscaping wise, uh, Troop 818 and Troop 819 from Enfield have been a huge, tremendous help in terms of landscaping each and every bridge. Due to their help, each bridge took less than an hour because um, just of the overwhelming outcome or turnout that each troop gave. The project has taught me many things, especially problem solving when things don't go exactly to plan, as well as um, time management and organizing the project as a whole. For example, when we had build days, I had to organize and give times and have, have everything go efficiently during the work days. Troop 818 has also taught, Troop 818 and scouting in general has also taught me a tremendous amount about leadership skills, public speaking, teamwork that I'll surely use for the rest of my life. And ha scouting has been a huge part of my life since, uh, when I joined Cub Scouts in first grade. I plan on hopefully getting my Eagle by springtime and uh, hopefully pursuing a trade in manufacturing as Nuntuck. And the skills I've learned throughout scouting will help me for the rest of my life. So, 
Any questions? Well done. <laughs> well, any questions? Well, any questions? Councilor Mangini. I just want to say thank you both. Um, as past president of Rotary, I know the hard work and all the obstacles that you had to go through, and we're very proud and honored that you were so successful and accomplished this goal. And I am also been assured that at some point, when you're ready, we will have a little dedication and include the Rotary members um, to support you know what you've done. You've done a beautiful job um, for a very good cause. And again, I just want to say thank you. And oh, sorry, go right ahead. Yep. Oh, Thank you so much for having me and being able to present my project. And I'm sure yeah, same goes well for Ryan. <laughs> 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 Councilor Riley. I just want to say you guys did a great job with your presentation. I am super, super, super proud of you guys. Um, your structure at Barnard is phenomenal. It looks like you could, you know, buy it at like Garden Barn. It's awesome. And the bridges at, um, <laughs> and the bridges, all the friendship bridges, I actually drove around and you could see them all clearly and they look like you could just buy them at Garden Barn as well. And they're like, awesome. You guys did a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. So do you have any anything else to achieve before you get your Eagle um, designation? Um, as far as what I have to do, I have to finish some last finishing touches on the actual bridges themselves, like plaques, and I have to present them to each school, like at an assembly. Um, then I have like a merit badge and I have to finish my uh, border review. And then that's all for me and as for... Mm -hmm. For me, I'm pretty much just waiting for the council to approve my Eagle Scout workbook to actually have my board of review, which is the final requirement I have for my Eagle. So we wish you best, you both of you the best of luck. I mean, uh, the, the projects are fantastic. I drove around town and definitely make a difference at the schools, the bridges and the pavilion. Outstanding. How long did it take you? You said about 90 hours for you, roughly? Um, for the, I'm not sure an exact total of hours. Uh, Still have to. So, were you that. the boss of your dad, or was it the other way around? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's all right. You can be on. It's all right. You can be on. It's okay. <laughs> I was, I was kind of the, I guess, director. However, my dad, <laughs> my dad did help, as I said, tremendously in guiding me through this project. Without him, this thing probably wouldn't have become a. I don't know as well as a finished product, I guess you could say. And for me, my project took about 268 hours. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Cool. For just the construction portion. Impressive, very well, impressive. I mean, it's an honor to have you two here tonight. I mean, we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here. Because again, I think it's, this stuff goes on all the time and it's good stuff. And it's great to hear. And again, we appreciate you taking the time to come here tonight. Because again, if people haven't seen the pavilion or seen the bridges, they, they make a difference at our schools. They really do. Thank you so much yeah. for having us. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I, we had some, a certificate, but we were told I couldn't give it to you until you guys get your Eagle badges. So we will, uh, when you get your well, Eagle badges, we will have something for you, all right? <laughs> we'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming tonight. We appreciate it. Great, great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, moving on to item seven, public communications. Sorry, let me get my thing. It is 7.14. Um, we have an hour for public communications. And I'd like to speak for the council at this time. We please ask that you refrain from personalities. And we'd like to speak for the council. Anyone would like to speak for the council at this time? Welcome. Hi. Amanda Marquez, 8 Hoover Lane. Our founding fathers wanted to form a government that guarded against the kind of overreach they witnessed in the English monarch. 
Our Constitution divides the government into three branches, legislative, judicial, and executive. This important foresight gave specific powers to each branch and set up a system of checks and balances which protect us from tyranny and abuse of power while maintaining the fundamental rights of every citizen. Connecticut, the Constitution state, seems to have forgotten why we need these three equal bodies of government. A constitutional democracy is one where the government gets its authority to govern from the people. We the people hold the power, not the elected officials who serve us. Yet our representatives at the Capitol have voted against the people's voice to once again grant Governor Lamont executive powers. With this, he has the ability to pass along mandates when he sees fit without any other branches confirming the legality and appropriateness of that action. The mask mandate has once again been extended until February 2022, with the governor now saying that vaccinating children between the ages of 5 and 11 will go a long way toward removing the current mask mandate. The next mandate will be the vaccine. We can see you dangling the proverbial carrot in front of us. If we vaccinate our children, then we can take the mask off. Trade one problem for a much larger, more dangerous one. Our children are not the spreaders of this virus. They're not severely affected by any COVID strain, and they have a 0.001% mortality rate if infected. The FDA is voting to approve vaccine use in children before Thanksgiving. If approved, inoculations could begin within a month. A safety report published last month by the Federal Institute for Vaccines and Biomedicines found that the COVID vaccine posed a greater risk of health complications than contracting COVID naturally. Why is the population that is seemingly unaffected by COVID controlled the most? Is it because children can't advocate for themselves? You've stated that you took an oath to uphold the law. Well, what happens when it's unconstitutional, dangerous, and sets a tyrannical precedent? Do you still have an obligation to uphold it? Lately, the only response given by our own Board of Education on a myriad of issues brought forth by parents is, we are mandated by the government. Our hands are tied. We don't have a choice. At the last Board of Education meeting, one board member even stated, I don't really see it as a loss of liberty when medical professionals are guiding us. The Nuremberg trial defendants claimed that they were just following orders from a higher authority. So does that not make their crimes against humanity wrong? If a higher authority, say a medical professional, tells us to do something, then it's not a loss of liberty? Nuremberg Code Point 1 states that the voluntary consent of the human subject is essential. This means that the person involved should have legal capacity to consent and should be so situated as to be able to exercise the power of choice. To make a statement publicly that being mandated to do something against your free will is not a loss of liberty is appalling. It doesn't matter who's guiding it. The definition of liberty is the power of choice. To take away your right to choose and you have a complete loss of liberty. When will you stand with the parents and echo our voice in protecting the children? We need a stronger board and town council who are willing to step up and fight with us, like so many other board of educations and councils around the country. They are fighting with the parents for their town and the children. Instead, Enfield has teachers emailing home to have parents reprimand their children because their masks were under their nose and students being written up on buses for pulling their masks down because they cannot breathe. The very adults enforcing these mandates aren't even wearing their masks correctly. One might think that a child stating they cannot breathe would be taken very seriously, yet they're ignored, told to pull their mask up, and then a letter is sent home. One assistant Enfield principal emailed a parent stating schools are directed to follow the mask mandate. If your child is stating that she cannot breathe, then perhaps there's a medical issue that needs to be addressed. Perhaps a different mask. A Google search will hopefully provide some answers and maybe a solution. How genuinely disturbing that the solution to a child saying they cannot breathe is to do a Google search. When a child says they cannot breathe, we need to take it extremely seriously, allow them a mask break, and not disappoint to the full extent of the law. After all, breathing is a fundamental principle of life. And for masks, there's a simple solution and one that doesn't mean tossing out our individual civil liberties and it goes like this. Those who choose to wear a mask can do so and those who don't are not mandated against their free will. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Anyone else? Welcome. Thank you. Matt Schmidt, 55 Main Street. Good evening, town council members. It seems my residential status has become a topic of great interest lately, even garnering the attention of some social media warriors. Well, I need to take some responsibility for the confusion. When I have come up to speak at Enfield meetings, I've been stating my address as 55 North Main Street. I've been inadvertently adding the word North each time. I believe this mistake is due to the fact that I recently moved from a neighboring town where I lived on a North Main Street. After 18 years of providing that address to people, I guess it just became habit. 55 Main Street, Bigelow Commons, is where I now live. And I never thought it necessary to provide a unit number, but since my residency has caused a few people such anxiety, I will provide that as well. 1304 Bigelow Commons. 
That's 1304 Bigelow Commons, in case anyone missed it. Now, this confirmation of my Enfield residency may come as a disappointment to some, especially the person who decided to try to follow me home after the last Board of Education meeting. When I realized they were tailing me, I crossed the river and led them to Suffield Meadows, a place I have no connection to whatsoever. I do not appreciate being creeped on, and I have no idea of this person's motivations or of their intent, especially since this occurred immediately after a Board of Education meeting at which I was heckled as I spoke to three minutes afforded each resident. Having had some time to think about the events of that night, I believe there are some things that need to be said. There is always more than one way to resolve a situation. For anyone who has heard me speak, I think it is evident that my focus has been on finding the best and simplest course to resolve the situation of masking children in schools. The best and simplest course to resolve a question about my address would have been to ask me. Just ask. It's a sad commentary on our present society that a person feels it more appropriate to follow someone they don't know rather than merely ask them a question. That would have avoided the sustained angst these people must have been feeling and would have avoided the blatant disrespect of trying to speak over me during a public meeting. The reason I am bringing this up here is that I want to get the events of that evening out in the open as quickly as possible. People are less likely to commit questionable acts when everyone is explicitly made aware of them. And I hope this council, each and every member, will publicly denounce such actions. Because why would a member of the public even look up another person's address? Is there opposition research being done on local residents, on parents, on everyday people who are simply concerned about how certain policies affect their children? I think most people would agree that there is definitely a large bit of creepiness about someone checking up on people participating in a local political process. The people who engage in this activity are hoping to use it to discredit a person and thereby discredit what that person has said and what they have yet to say, in other words, a tactic. Then it just reveals that these people cannot successfully argue against the message, so they set their sights on the messenger. If, however, the, the people sifting through personal details of residents are genuinely concerned about non-residents exerting per, per, um, excuse me, political influence in this town, all I have to say is, where have you been? The crux of my, most of my arguments against the school mask mandates is that these decisions should be made on a local level. Ned Lamont is not an Enfield resident. The heads of the Connecticut State Department of Education and the Connecticut Department of Public Health are not Enfield residents. How ironic to prioritize the importance of residency and then turn around and argue vehemently that we need to listen to the state at all costs. If it is that important to make certain that only residents have a voice in the political process, then be consistent. Join me in fighting to make the school mass decisions local. If not, then maybe your time would be better served researching your arguments rather than researching me. I don't know, maybe it all just comes down to the fact that I'm not very well known around here. I mean, who's this long haired guy just happened to show up speaking against school mask mandates? If you really wanna know, just ask. We can go grab a cup of coffee. We can discuss our differences, and perhaps more importantly, our similarities. Yes, I'm new here, but I wanna believe that all who attend and watch these meetings are open to resolutions. So I'll state publicly, whether you agree with me or not, elected official or not, I am open to discussion. Let's find solutions that work for everyone and puts the interests of the residents of this town above all else. And I'm willing to put myself out there to make clear that I don't feel intimidated by last week's actions, and neither should anyone who opposes the, man the mandates because people should never feel afraid or ashamed to speak publicly. I know I never will. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Ma'am. I believe I spoke to the counselor. This afternoon, Donna. Ma'am, just ma'am, uh, just ma'am, just name an ad address, please. Um, Constance Boyage, one sixty-five Sherman Road. Welcome, Thank welcome. Thank you. And what this is about? <laughs> I have lived in Green Manor for I think about sixty-one years, and we knew about the pool coming. I just thought it was a fantastic situation. The pool the school, it was a community that's really great. And so now, huh, the pool is filled with sod. There's a garden growing, like there's a garden growing at the library, but the library didn't close because the garden's growing, but it's like, I just 
thought it's too bad that the pool was filled in. It would have been taken not so much money to refurbish it. It wasn't in that bad a shape. But now it's like, and then this thing about having these um, shower pads or whatever you call them, it's um, well, like you can't swim in a shower pad. You can't learn how to do this. You can't dive under and play with your friends in the water. And that's what swimming is all about. And I just think it's a great thing to be able to learn how to swim. I had all that freedom when I was a kid and it was beautiful. And it's like, um, it's too bad that you think that some kind of a just a shower will satisfy it. It's because swimming is a, a great skill. It's um, hopefully, it's the showers I'm not so sure about. Maybe it will cool you off, like I take a shower at home and it cools me off. But I think a swimming pool is a great adventure for kids, middle-aged people, and old fogies. And thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good evening. My name's Elizabeth Davis, and I reside at 201 North Maple Street. Um, first off, I agree with you on the Green Manor. You're right, over to have the pool and stuff. It's sad to see how our town just keeps on losing things. So my big question of coming tonight is, of course, the dispensary that I already spoke about. And the article that was in the paper um, that the mayor spoke you know about not wanting it my big question to pretty much all of you other republicans that voted no against what the people wanted to allow a business in our town but here's the the big thing that just really baffles me if you're so sure the community the people you represent didn't want a cannabis dispensary in town a business that's going to pay revenue just like all the package stores and everybody else does you had plenty enough time to work around behind doors to figure out how you can deny it and how we can pass this or do this and do that. Now that's July. So you had enough time to put it on the ballot for the citizens to vote. So that's my real concern. I'm really hoping I could get an answer why you wouldn't have just put it on the ballot. Let the people of this town decide if they want that business or not. I think that would have been the right thing to do. Matter if you're for it or not, you can vote no. If you're not for it, you can vote yes if you're for it but it should have been up to the people. So I'm hoping we get an answer on that because it would be nice to start um, having people represent all of us instead of just picking and choosing who we represent. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Welcome. Thank you. Lynn Kostek, 13 Teach Street. Um, I got so many things to say to this board. Uh, first thing is this referendum that went out in, um, in the mail, and it had the list of all four different referendums, um, one of them being the roads. Uh, you know, I don't mind with my taxes being used to take care of the roads, but the roads are crap. And I'm going to tell you, whoever has been doing it, whoever you people have to come in and do these roads in Enfield because they're the lowest bidder, well, you know what? They're not doing a proper job. And if you want someone to do a proper job, you know who you need to ask? You need to ask like uh, towns in where they have really bad weather. Try Buffalo, New York. Give them, you know, ask them how do you keep your roads 
uh, you know, good enough where they last 20 years because our roads don't even last two. And I'm gonna name my street for one. And then what they did, what you guys did to the aprons of everyone's driveways on my street is despicable. So like half my driveway is, was dug up because of this road situation. And do you think this town would say, we're gonna repair your driveway for you? No, there was no offer. The curbs, the curbs are going to crap because what, what's happening every time there's a snowstorm, snow plow comes in and they take up the curbs. So the curbs are now gone. Well, that's what I gotta say about the roads because right now I'm paying taxes and it's burning my butt that is just going to waste because none of you think of a long-term plan. Everything is short-term. You, you got if you want to stay on this board, you guys got to start thinking of long-term plans because that's, you got to think of the betterment of the town and not for yourselves. Um, another thing I want to bring up is um, <clears throat> the marijuana dispensary. You know, the, the, the main fight that everyone's talking about is like, Oh, it might get in our children's hands. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? If, it, if it's going to get in your children's hands, they're, they're going to find a way. And it's not through the dispensaries. How about the package stores that are within walking distance of our schools? Now, you want to talk about drug? Alcohol's a drug. So, you know, if, if, if you're going to ban a dispensary, why don't you close down all our package stores, too? And now I'm going to bring up masks. Well, let me tell you something how I feel about that. How about you got a child who doesn't want to wear a mask, the family doesn't want to be vaccinated, then you got another child who comes into school who gets severe asthma. Okay, so this kid comes in, was exposed to COVID, sits next to a kid who's got asthma. For some reason, they're borrowing pens, paper, crayons, and next thing you know, that kid with asthma has got COVID. What's going to happen to that kid? That kid's going to die. And why? Because a kid didn't want to put a mask on and the parents didn't want to get them vaccinated. Seriously? How about cancer patients? We're all sitting in this room. All of you guys have no mask on. How about if someone seriously is ill in here? someone who's got cancer and you guys are spreading some sort of germs because you refuse to wear a mask well let me tell you i hope you guys can go to bed with a clear conscience knowing that you may have been the one to spread germ to that person who's not going to make it to see tomorrow time's up thank you thank you Anyone else like to speak for the council for the first time? Anyone else like to speak for the council for the first time? For the second time? Anyone else like to speak for the council? Hearing none, I'd to close public communications. Closed. Move on to councilor communications. Councilor Sferraza. Um, I wanted to uh, just make a statement tonight because the next meeting there'll be a new council. Um, and I also, I think by eight o'clock tonight, I don't want to wait till the end of the meeting because if people had a choice between the council and the Red Sox game, I'm not sure we'd win on that. Um, well, I'm just saying. But I do sincerely want to thank um, the people of this community. Um, I want to thank you for the fact that in 2019, the first time I ran for office, you elected me. Um, prior to that, you supported me as the police chief. 
and I'm grateful to the residents that gave me that opportunity. Um, I hear a lot of people mentioned, um, you know, on, on the different issues we have, you know, to listen to the residents. Well, I think you could ask any one of us up here, no matter what the issue is, one resident will say absolutely vote yes, and another resident says absolutely vote no. So I've never had a situation where everyone's in an agreement. So what do you do when there's a tie? Um, I respect both opinions, I listen to them, I weigh them, and then I make a decision what I think is the best decision to make. I may be wrong, but my intention was always to do right, and I did the best I could for everyone. So I wanna thank the people for that. Also, I think if you ask our council people up here, uh, what you need to be a good council person is you need your family to back you up. Um, I know we all agree on this. It's not twice a month we come here. We come here twice a month, we have caucuses, we have special meetings. At budget time, we're meeting Saturdays and several times a week. Uh, committee meetings, uh, helping out with constituents, it's all part of the deal. And I wanna thank my wife, Donna Lee, and my son, Alex, and my daughter, Audra, for supporting me for these two and a half years. And, and while we're thanking people, uh, Chris, if you would be so kind as to express my sincere gratitude to the town staff, um, I was privileged to work with a lot of these people for over 38 years. But as a council person, if I had to find out a question about something, they're always so accommodating, willing to help, and uh, please express my gratitude to them. And while we're talking about town staff, Chris, um, I want you to know that when you have a staff like that, I believe um, it's not luck that a staff is like that. The tone is set at the top. I have had the uh, opportunity to work with six town managers going back to 1980. And I'm not here to talk ill of any of them, but I will tell you, Chris, and I want the people of Enfield to know that what we have done in a bipartisan fashion on this council, with all the projects we've begun, uh, buildings, whatever, all the good things that we've done, um, we've done it in a bipartisan fashion for the most part, but a lot of the ideas for our Enfield Express and our Higgins Park and all these things came from Mr. Bromson. And I had the privilege to work with him for 12 years in the police department. And as a manager, um, I think you've done an extraordinary job, Chris. I really do. And I want the people to know that. Um, I want to thank the people on the council, both present members and members that I served with before. I want to uh, thank my Republican colleagues over the years and, and those of you to hear it today. I think we've done some great things. And to my Democratic colleagues, I thank you. Um, we certainly didn't agree all the time on the votes, but more important than that, um, when we did disagree, we did it in a civil, respectful way. And I think what you see going on in the country now with all this division and anger, it's not that diversity of ideas is a bad thing, it's just we don't do it in a respectful way, and I think we set a good example here. And finally, um, if someone were to ask me what could I give for advice to the next council, and especially someone that never served, I would tell you this. Expect that when you get here, everyone's not gonna agree. You're gonna have disagreements on how we should do things, what paths we should take. All that's gonna be, uh, that's part of the, the deal. But I would ask you this. Don't focus on what makes you different. Focus on what we have in common. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and speak for the whole council, and I think everybody here sincerely wants Enfield to be the best we could possibly make it, the highest quality of life. And I think uh, what you need to focus on is the end game, which is we should make this a welcoming community for all people. And if we did that, I think we'd be on the road to a, a, a good path to follow. So thank you very thank much. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Councilor Mangini. <clears throat> Carl, you're a tough act to follow. <laughs> God bless you. I do want to echo um, Councilman Spraza's um, sentiments and his uh, delivery. 
uh, it has been a pleasure to serve with every member of this council, first and foremost. And with town staff, Chris, on the staff, and to serve the public with respect um, for our uh, counterparts, the Republican, the, my Democratic side, that's extremely important. And Carl, <clears throat> you said it very eloquently. And I thank you for that. Our country uh, right now uh, is not very uh, respectful of uh, people showing one another courtesies, etc. So I like exactly what you said. It holds very true. So thank you for that. <clears throat> and I do want to make one announcement. Mount Carmel Auxiliary this Saturday is having their outdoor craft fair. And I think they've got over 100 vendors. It's uh, going to be remarkable, like the last one. This is the second one we're holding. It's Saturday, excuse me, from 10 to 3. And I'd like to encourage uh, everyone who can to please come out and support and um, do some Christmas shopping. It's going to be a, a great event. It's going to be good weather. So please, I'd like to see people come out and support that. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Suzak, then Councilor Sakala. I like Carl. This will be my last meeting. 12 years, I'm going to step aside from running for election and uh, concentrate on uh, what I'll do the rest of my life. So, and of course, I wanted to just thank everybody, counselors, staff. Chris, I've been cleaning my office. I haven't found any new projects for you. It's okay. <laughs> I, I have to say, I mean, I've been through, you know, at least four or five town managers. I mean, after 20 years of, you know, volunteering in the schools and then 12 years in elected, you touch a lot of people's lives and they touch yours. And, um, of course, I came here tonight and I was going to just talk about that, but I'm sorry, I have to talk about other things. First of all, I did talk to Mrs. Boyajan today. We have four referendums. They're really important. I'm not gonna tell you how to vote or anything like that. But I will tell you that I've been involved in, I don't know, maybe five or six referendums. And we need to listen to the people and we need to address their concerns. And we need to, when we go to referendum, know that these things are important and keep at it. Because she talked about, you know, in the 90s, and Cindy, you probably remember that failed referendum, and nobody went back out and listened to what people had said. And I did tell her that the ones I've been involved in, if they didn't pass the first time, I went back out again until I got it right for the people. Mm -hmm. And we always need to do that. So swimming, yes, very important. Splash pads are something that parents Charlotte will attest to, you know, that this is what young parents bring their, their kids to. Yeah, we do have a pool that our rec department does run swim lessons. Swimming is a vital skill that everyone should learn. I have an in-ground pool. I can't tell you how many kids I have taught to swim and <laughs> pulled out when I realized they could not swim. So those are things, and they are important. But there are things that parents need to do, and there are things that government needs to do. And we need to know where the line is, and when it's a parental right, and it's a government right, uh, need to provide this. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, the roads. Our staff is excellent at answering questions. Do the roads in Buffalo, New York last longer than ours? I don't know. You know, I do know that our roads don't last as long because we have to put more um, recycled materials in. This, this does weaken the roads. And you know, the, the planet Earth is a moving, breathing entity and our roads will crack and they will need to be taken care of. So if we can get that information and put it out on our, our website, that would be really great because I think that sometimes we think that, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence and it's not. So 
I know that, you know, Joey's not, not here. He's recuperating. I, we've been working on the ordinance. And if anybody didn't catch the article in the paper, the surrounding communities are buying the um, software that they need for pay as you throw. So if you don't think in the near future when that truck pulls up and grabs your can and dumps it in the garbage truck that you won't be paying like you are with your sewer, think again. So when we tell you to start recycling, be conscientious about your recycling, we're only telling you for your own good because you're going to be charged eventually for everything that you throw away. But on that note, thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Oh, Mike's going to remind me that for the last time, I'm going to make a motion to suspend the rules and move items A1, E, F, G, H, I, J, and K to miscellaneous. Thank you. Motion made. Second, Second by Councilor Muller. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions. Ten in favor, zero against. Councilor Sakala. Thank you. Um, First and foremost, um, here is a plug. The Opera House Players is putting on um, the show Mamma Mia. So that is happening November 5th through the 7th, 12th through the 14th, and 19th through the 21st. Shows are Saturday, Sundays, and Fridays. You can go to operahouseplayers.org to get tickets. Um, through the town, uh, through the mayor to the town manager, um, a resident on Summer Street contacted me and said that there's been a lot of speeding on that street near summer and I probably park. Um, so they didn't know what could be done, if anything. I don't know if we could put one of those speed readers up from um, the police department, um, but that is a concern. Additionally, um, Chris, if I can for the next meeting, if I'm here, um, get an update um, on the daycare letter that went out. So what I'm looking for is I have a couple of questions. Um, and I know John Wilcox is here too, so that's convenient. Um, the letter that went out said that, you know, about the taxes and the home daycares being taxed. So I want to know, is it something that the town of Enfield can exempt? If it is, what's the process to exempt the home daycares? And has that been done before by a council here in Enfield? So those are my questions on that. Um, I am also looking for an update on the Brainerd Park softball field uh, progress. <laughs> Tell me, um, I need to know where we stand on that and when it will be ready. Um, and lastly, uh, I have absolutely no idea if I'll be here come November 3rd, but I've enjoyed most of my time here, not all of it, let's be honest, <laughs> um, but most of it. Um, but if I am here, great. If, um, if I'm not, then the people who spoke. But if I am here, Carl, it's been a pleasure. Donna, um, it's been a pleasure working with you too. And I, I, I most, I appreciate most your hard work on the Joint Facilities Committee because although that stuff doesn't happen here, that committee is a very, very busy and important committee. And I appreciate your hard work on that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Councilor Grisotti. Well, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, to Carl and Donna, it's been a pleasure uh, over the years working with both of you um, and all the committees that, that we've been on, the Joint Facilities, Leisure Committee, and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, we, we've uh, accomplished quite a bit. And uh, Carl, it's always a pleasure. I know I'll be seeing you around uh, quite often. And uh, but thank you for your, your service um, on this council. It's greatly appreciated. Um, just trying to be upbeat, uh, you know, in regard to everything that's going on. There are a lot of good things that are happening here in town. And, uh, you know, going to the ribbon cutting ceremony Friday over at the uh, basketball courts over at Lafayette Park and over at Elkhorn School. Uh, you know, you know, this is something that's great for our town, the residents, the kids, uh, being able to utilize the, the basketball courts, plus the park areas are just absolutely gorgeous at both places right now. And uh, it was great to see the 
uh, the transition of the ETLA uh, kids uh, at the ribbon cutting ceremony. And, uh, you know, it's a special program uh, in our hearts, everybody's hearts here. And uh, seeing the joy of them being out there and uh, using this, but it, it just really, you know, made our day. And it's special. And this is the reason why we put these projects out and they're, they're getting accomplished so people get to see really what's going on here in town. So, um, you know, thank you for for getting that project going and the hard work that was put in because they really did a pretty fast job in getting that accomplished. So, you know, and here we are, we able to use it before winter sets in. And uh, that to me is uh, great. Uh, the other thing I just want to say to our public works department, I know that we had uh, that, that I had complaints about the illegal dumping once again that's taken place over on uh, North River Street by where the uh, you know the old casket building and then on South River Street. Um, and thank you to uh, the public works for cleaning up that that area because that is you know that that's an eyesore for those people and you know, if we can do something about the property owners on the street that abuts that, you know, because when the people leave with their, for their, uh, you know, once their rent is up, they don't have any place to put their stuff or maybe they got evicted or whatever. So what's the easiest thing to do is to, at late at night, they go dump it. But it's, a, it's an eyesore for those people down there. But thank you uh, for taking care of that and addressing that. And I thought that was very important. Um, Another issue um, that I ended up getting a few calls from are the residents over on Middle Road, one specifically um, on 95 Middle Road. They are complaining about the, the water um, from the construction that's being done on 190. Their property abuts it. And what's happening is they're getting water in their basements based on the construction. All right, and I don't really know, but their, their complaints is since all that construction that was going on over there, their, their backyards are like, they, they said they could make rice patties out there because it's, it's, it's damp and it's uh, really mosquito infected areas now. Um, one of the residents said that he even tried make, building a, or making a trench, a five, like three city went 300 feet, four feet wide just to absorb some, some of the water that's been coming on. Yes, I know it's been a wet season, uh, however, but they said they really haven't noticed that. But since the construction from those projects on 190, that's something that has to really kind of be uh, looked at. So if we could maybe have engineering take a, take a peek at that, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, thank you. Um, Yesterday, this is my, my last thing that I'm going to say, but this is a, something that I think our town should be really proud of. Yesterday, I attended the uh, Connecticut Sports Rider Alliance Gold Key Dinner uh, at AquaTurf. Um, I'm really proud to announce that two of Enfield's finest coaches were recognized. Uh, Cookie Brummage uh, received the prestigious Gold Key Award. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, this is get, give it a little time once the new council gets uh, selected. I, I think that she should be honored here by us. Okay, so, um, you know, she's once again was recognized for 52 years of coaching Enfield field hockey and winning five state championships and, and, and all of the, the work that she's done here for the kids and students of, of Enfield. Uh, you know, and us to name the field after her, you know, that was the right thing to do. Uh, the second one was Ben Alex. He won the uh, John Wentworth Good Sport Award. And he's a longtime Fermi High School wrestling coach who's going to be inducted into the Connecticut Wrestling Hall of Fame for his work that he's done at Fermi High School. But he also was recognized for his volunteer work for youth wrestling. Uh, we did name that uh, over at the annex, the Ben Alex uh, wrestling room in his honor. So when we make these recommendations of people that we honor, 
This is legit. So what we did for Cookie Brummage and Ben Alex was the right thing to do. So when names are brought forward, they're not names that, you know, that, you know, they're, they're not, uh, well, let's put it this way. These are names of people that are, are brought forward. So when people want to recognize somebody to name a field after, they have credentials galore. It's just not somebody that just had come along. We want to name something after that. So, uh, and I know that over the last couple of years, an, uh, another person's name has been brought up, but it's been put on the back burner for a couple of years. But I think we put it back on the burner once the new council is, is selected. And God willing, if I'm here, then we'll, we'll move forward with that. Um, so uh, there are two well-deserved uh, honors, and it was, it was a great, great day. And, uh, you know, once again, uh, yeah, we know that this is our, you know, last meeting before the election and everything, but it's, it's been a pleasure, you know, working with everybody uh, here on the, on the council and, uh, you know, and God willing, we're, we're here, so. But thank you. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Um, yeah, so I've um, been out talking to a, a lot of residents lately, and I just wanted to um, refresh everybody. So if you have questions about the referendum, you can definitely contact any one of us, and we can definitely help you with the questions that you might have. Um, or if you go to the Enfield, Town of Enfield webpage, you go under town clerk and then you can go to 2021 election and referendum and then on the right hand side there's links it's got like faqs it's got some of the powerpoint presentations that we did so if you have specific questions or maybe you want to have another refresher or maybe missed it the first time around um, that's where you can find that um, and then the only other thing that i wanted to say was i it's kind of alarming that somebody would follow somebody home that came up and you know use their first amendment right to speak so um i hope that you know you contact the proper authorities regarding the situation um, and i really hope that that doesn't happen to anybody else in our community i think uh and i hope that it feels you know better than that but that's all i had to say thank you anyone else here you know we move on to town manager report nothing from you mr mayor i'm surprised I'll save it. For sure, last. you didn't I'll forget. I'll save it for last. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Councilors, and, and our guests. Um, I'll try to. There were quite a, f a few different things uh, mentioned, um, so I'll just try to hit them quickly uh, and let you move on. I know Carl wants to watch the Red Sox. Um, we had a, uh, a, a wonderful day Sunday for the farmers market. There will be one more outside, and then we are transitioning. As I said, we did get final permission, and we've had all of the vendors, virtually over 80 of them, we had to cut it off, who have now taken um, spots at the Enfield Square. So for Halloween, that will be the opening of the indoor. We'll do it through the winter like we did last year. And as I said, we had such a response, we had to stop. Um, and I, and you know, one of the reasons is because since we did this last winter, and I'd hope to think that we had a little bit to do with it, there are new stores that have been moving into the square and taking up some of the space that we use. So I think it's been a great partnership of town, public, and uh, private. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Namdar for letting us use that at no cost to the vendors or to the town. And I think they really fostered a good relationship with us and we wish them uh, well. I think they're gonna do very well as we start to come out of this pandemic. Um, so I ask all of our folks to transition from uh, Sundays on the green to Sundays at the square. I would also like to say that uh, you are correct, uh, Charlotte and others. Um, we do have a lot of information on our website. I think we, you know, we post a lot of our special meetings in regard to roads and roofs and everything else under the sun. Uh, th there's a, just a dearth of information there. If people are interested to go on and they can see all of the experts, I think on the referendums, we actually did four. We did an initial one a little more in depth Then we had staff come on each and every one of them given in depth uh, with major uh, longer presentations of data and information the deep dive which is on the website so I think all other questions could be answered if they wanted to go and look there um, I would also say that uh, it was very exciting uh, Mr. Cassati to go 
uh, and see the culmination of this council's hard work and, and foresight in the two ribbon cuttings for both the um, basketball courts at Alcorn and at the Lafayette Park. Um, it was a little darker this evening when you came in. Fall is upon us, but you can also see that we're close to conclusion on your uh, Higgins Park basketball court right here in the back of Town Hall. As you all know, uh, and we're here all day long. We hear the, the gleeful uh, shouts and joy and giggles and laughter of all of the children and parents and grandparents who come and use this playscape. It's remarkable. The basketball court is going to be part of that. And as soon as that, as you can see, we're, we're readying the rest of the back here for the two walking trails, the one third mile and the quarter mile. I've had more people, uh, middle aged, young people who are on the council, people who have left say, I can't wait to come and start walking on those tracks. And we're also we've put in also for fitness stations and uh, that hopefully will be done within the next couple of months for everybody's use. And the council at the last meeting uh, approved the purchase of the Enfield Express and I said then I'll tell you now uh, equally important as to the two drive-through ports for our residents to be able to conduct business um, from their vehicle there was almost two acres there we will match the parking be town behind town hall because we're gonna have a lot of people coming here for these amenities of this park especially when at the next meeting or the one after um, we purchase the Santa Dalberts and finalize the 9,000 square foot tournament basketball indoor uh, facility that's going to be used by recreation by schools there's a stage there'll be an indoor walking path for anyone during the winter months and a climbing wall uh, I have to say as Bob said and the mayor and others and um, Donna, this council has done a remarkable job since I've been here. It's going to be, I can't believe, in April, four years that I've been manager. And we had a lot of thoughts and ideas, but you brought them home. And they're all being built now, despite COVID, because this council, all of you, every single one, it's bipartisan. When I see here, I don't see ours, Democrats. That's the last thing on my mind. I see a group that's worked together to accomplish a lot for the town. And you had the foresight even before the budget and before other communities were acting upon projects to fund them. So we were able to get these things done where others are stuck in the mire of um, companies, construction costs, availability of materials, uh, people who were ill on COVID. We got a lot of these projects in and we're going to get a lot more of them in over the winter and into the spring, all for the benefit and enjoyment of our residents. And in particular, I'll tell you, somebody had said, I think, um, Liz, you know, Enfield has taken things away. I think Alcorn Park was a good example. They took the basketball court. And it was nice to see that a mother uh, opined, my son is so thrilled you brought the basketball court back. Likewise at Lamagna, and I wish this gentle lady had stayed. She talked about Green Manor and the pool. Um, we are closing Lamagna. That pool have its last season this year, but we did put in the referendum to, to replace a 25 meter, zero entry state of the art pool for Higgins Park. So I believe that when you take something away, you should bring it back. And I will just say too, on and every everybody, it's a different cup of tea for everyone, right? I love swimming, I love pools. The pool behind Town Hall to do one of that magnitude, just current cost is two to $3 million. A splash pad, although people criticize and say, oh, you spent a lot on it. People don't understand the cost of materials for basketball courts, for construction, for homes right now. Um, splash pads, by comparison, are a deal. And that's what the citizens that I've heard since I've been sitting up here as town attorney, public safety director and manager for 30 years. Give us splash pads. We want splash pads. So they have the opportunity to decide if they like the one we put in. I'll tell you, from the kids that were out there, I think they liked it, and so did the grandparents that ran through, too. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's for everybody. They're not exclusive. Uh, maybe we'll be able to do more, more Paul, uh, pools in town. I'd like to do a, a pool in every major neighborhood as well. I, I think it would be incredible. But I will tell you, and I don't want to belabor it, but this town and this council has done a lot. And I'll tell you a couple of reasons why we're poised for great success in the coming year. One of them, Eversource, who've been working on the property to acquire down by the train station where it's proposed. That is over 65% designed. DOT has told us they're on track to begin it in the spring with all the influx of federal money. And I will tell you, just so you know, we have a good relationship with our state government and the governor. We don't always wave the flag and go on TV, but the governor in the last two and a half weeks has been here twice, and he's scheduled to come back a third time to look at some of the innovative programs that 
the Board of Education has done at the school, and he came there to visit with the superintendent and myself to look at those. He came to talk to us, and I'll say about another project that we have proposed that uh, was funded by the state, hopefully, if our voters approve of it. So Enfield's on the map, and I want to tell you something, because I don't, I, I'm a positive person, even after going 32 years here. Um, the governor, when we did the express and he cut the ribbon, he looked over at all of the folks from the town, the staff and the council, he said, Enfield is a leader in Connecticut. And that's from the governor. So a lot of people may want to dispute it and criticize, but we're doing a lot of good things. Down by Eversource, we've been working on that project for quite a while. Uh, I'm going to get you just your consent. The town attorneys looked at it. We don't need formal approval or a resolution, but there's going to be um, a $17 million availability for brownfield eradication money. The deadline is October 22nd. Uh, Nelson has looked at it. We'd like to propose, we'd like to, um, file for two million you can you're eligible to clean up down by the eversource property uh, eversource is working with us they they expedited it we would be eligible for two million dollars previously we wanted to, to do parking for the casket building well the casket building is no longer there we now would like to propose much like we're going to do at la Magna and strand because again you put the money in for those to be taken down that's done and we have a proposal for mixed use for housing 45 uh, apartments, a restaurant, and, and uh, stores. We'd like to use the same footprint done by UConn and their urban planners for down by Eversorts. It's a higher and better use. Gina had asked about that when we were talking about using it for parking about a couple of years ago. She said, well, could we do more? And with the cleanup, with the brownfield, we would be able to elevate highest and best use. So we're going to try. Um, I, you know, the state, we don't have the plans as developed as we'd like or have gone out to bid yet because really we were looking uh, for parking and now we can do so much more down there. But we're eligible because of all the hard work that's already been put into it. Likewise, Nelson brought to my attention today, the governor has announced uh, $200 million in DECD monies, uh, $100 million for cities and $100 million for other municipalities that we are eligible for uh, mass transportation and development around the core for also other investments. All of the things that we're doing in the park and pools and basketball, all of that is eligible for us to apply for 50% reimbursement, uh, up to $10 million. And we're in a catbird seat because our, our projects aren't shovel ready. We've already built half of them and they will be eligible. So because we didn't stop, we weren't asleep, we didn't have our head in the sand, masks or no mask, we were all working hard here uh, and we were I always said when, when government opens back up, I don't want to be at the end of the line. I want to be at the front of the line when the doors open. And we have been. And I thank all of you because you've all worked hard. I wish you all the best of luck in the election. I look forward. I've had an absolute pleasure and honor to work with all of you. Uh, I look forward to working with all of you in the future or whomever uh, the, the capable persons who seek to uh, replace the openings. Um, everybody seems to come to the council and, and work together after the election. And I think you've all been civil and worked hard in this election from what I've seen over my span of years. I will miss you, Donna. Um, not always the phone calls initially that she would call, but my God, she was always right. She had a long and institutional memory. And I would, I would never be on a call or in a leadership meeting where she said, well, I remember it this way. I, I stopped saying, well, I'm not sure about that because 99.9. .9 Donna was right, and she did work very, very hard uh, with Gina and the others on the joint facilities to do things like building consolidation, the roof program. A lot was accomplished. And to my uh, colleague and friend, Mr. Sferaza, I will miss you. I wish you the best of luck. Always enjoyed working with you. You're a man of honor and integrity. Um, and also, be quiet. He is, and he deserves it. When you put in 38 years of your life, putting your life on the line for your residents, and then running for town office when you don't have to, he deserves a thank you, and he deserves a little respect from everybody sitting out there. When you put your 38 years in, you come on up here, and I'll thank you, too. And Carl, the one thing you did, and I didn't want to besmirch my testament to you, but I don't like people cackling in the background. You want to come up, there's public communication, have the, the courage to do that. But Mr. Sferaza, you always preached and lived what you said to every new officer we hired. He'd bring him into his office, he'd sit him down, and he'd say, young lady or young man, do the right thing, even if no one's watching. And that's guided him, and it's guided our police department. And I would say that to everyone who takes the podium, do the right thing, even when no one's watching. Um, John Wilcox ha will have an answer on the taxation issue, Ms. Gina. Uh, I think we can do an exemption. I will say it's not a new tax. It's a tax 
that's been out there. I think probably some people moving into town were unaware of it, uh, and others, it was only that our new assessor was trying to allow people to pay it online as opposed to having to come in. He was trying to uh, make it more convenient for our residents. Not, we don't have the ability, just so people understand, uh, towns don't have the ability to tax, only the state does. So, and likewise, we can only exempt or excuse taxes when the state gives us the authority to do so. And he's looking at it, he thinks we might be able to do that, and we'll have something at the next council meeting. Um, I think... That may be it, unless the council has any other questions. And again, thank you all for your hard work. And I'll tell you, one thing became very apparent when we were doing the dedication of the basketball court. It takes everyone. Um, ideas are, are cheap. Hard work is what gets things done. So we have a great staff. A lot of people have come forward with ideas. I, I can't take credit for a lot of them. Some I can, but it's the, it's the effort of staff to make them real. It's up to the council to see the vision and the wisdom in it and to uh, approve it and to legislate and to appropriate and then the staff to make it happen and it's it really does take all of those people together and then as Bob said the reward the reward instead of criticizing all the time go out to the basketball courts go out to the place escape and, and have lunch I, I went on Saturday and Sunday to Lafayette kids playing I go to Alcorn all the kids are playing basketball out there. I come to the, to, the, to the town hall, and all of the kids and the families are on the playscape, and they're going to use this basketball court. You have done one hell of a job, and I'm proud to have been affiliated and worked with all of you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the town manager? You didn't um, address the Brainerd Park. I don't oh. know. Well, I don't know if you have an answer for me. Of but course you I don't. do. Oh. Of Great. course I do. Um, I, we meet with the public works director every week on all of these projects to make sure and find out where we are. I mean, on yours, I meet twice a week because I want to make sure we get it done right. I met with him today and discussed it. And they are on track to have the bid go out so they can have it completed in the spring. We're hopeful, just like the parking next door, the bids will go out. We have the money. Uh, in ARA, and we've already approved it in other areas to do the parking lots and take down the trees. Brainerd Park, the biz, biggest expense there was because we have to remove trees. Likewise, next door, we'll remove the trees. I asked him to give me, and, uh, and what we'll start to do, um, Mr. Collins, we'll start to give an update on all of them as we get closer, because the last thing I want to do is incur anybody's wrath that the, the uh, parks aren't ready, because certainly I'll be on my borough and leaving if they're not, instead of facing you to tell you why it's not done. So I, I'm pretty confident and comfortable we're on track. And Chris, for the, for the next, could John also look at, I mean, we've heard from small businesses who I guess the federal money that specifically was available for restaurants is not no longer available or on... The money's dried up. When he's looking at tax breaks, it's going to be for all small businesses. Is the statute allowed? Is it a specific business, or is it for certain size businesses where we could extend the tax break to other small businesses in town? You know, I know we're thinking of using some of the American Recovery Act money, but I think it's also I think we've got to be careful of not if we're going to give a break to a business, a small business. Should be we should look at it for every small business. So I don't know if that qualifies in the statute that John's looking I'll at. I'll have John look at it. We can we reach out. Kasha research, right. is a liaison with the Congress, uh, Courtney's right. office, and we can look and see. And what I can tell you on the American Recovery, our proposal, and we did step one with the Express. As I said, we'll come back in each and every one of them. But we have put, as you recall, $400,000. That was our proposal right. for small businesses in town to come and get a uh, grant, non-repayable, between five and 10000 under circumstances. We've worked a criteria. We're hopeful at the beginning of the next council um, we'll refer to the to uh, probably the general government subcommittee uh, and Nelson to oversee it and by virtue of that amount of money we could probably help uh, to the tune of five to ten thousand dollars forty to uh, uh, eighty small okay. businesses to help them um, to uh, cope with what they went through during good. COVID. Good, thank you. I just want to make sure you had plenty of time. Thank you. Uh, item ten, town attorney report. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there's no public report with regard to the legal matters, but I would like to just make a quick observation. Um, politics is really a tough business, and serving on a legislative body like the town council is a really thankless job. Um, I've been representing municipalities around the state of Connecticut for 25 years, and this was my first time. I'm ending the, the 
the second year of a first term as an actual town attorney as opposed to representing municipalities. And I never wanted to be town attorney because I've seen some horrifying things at legislative meetings, almost hand-to-hand -hand combat, shouting, really um, boorish behavior. But in the two years I've been here, not a single instance. It has been an absolute pleasure to be your town attorney. Uh, I can think of only a handful of votes that were not unanimous. Most of the major projects, the big issues, there's been great uh, unanimity. And even when there were disagreements, they were entirely civil and the level of courtesy has been remarkable. So for those of you who are, are getting out of the business, I wish you well. Um, Councillor Suziak, it's been a pleasure. I'll, all, I'll always call you Chief, Chief Sferaza. So uh, you, you've earned uh, some time off and I wish you the best. It's been an absolute pleasure. To the rest of you, I wish you all good luck and we'll see you again at the next meeting. Thank you. Any questions for the town attorney? Moving on to item 11, report of any special committees? Oh, I have none. We move to item 12, old business. Item 12A, B, C, and D remain on the table. Item 13A, new business consent agenda, there is none. Item B, C, and D appointments, there are none. Item 14A, uh, uh, A, excuse me, under 14 items for discussion, A1 has been moved to miscellaneous. Item B, A, C, and D are all appointments, there are none. E, F, G, H, I, J, and K have been moved to miscellaneous. So now we move to item 15, miscellaneous. Sorry, one second. Item 14.1, the consent agenda. Discussion resolution, trans request to transfer funds for winter recreation of $6,000. Resolved in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. From the general fund, unallocated contingency of $6,000 to buildings and grounds, athletic supplies of $5,000, and the general fund unallocated, uh, excuse me, from uh, I've said that wrong. From general fund unallocated contingency of six thousand to the li from the library fund of well, these numbers are all messed up, aren't they? Um, no. Because it says no. all right, so that's total five thousand. Sorry about this. This just messed me up. All right, from the general fund of six six thousand dollars to the library fund of six thousand dollars for leisure programs and supplies. Sorry, this is a setup a little unique. Uh, certified that the above funds are available as of October 12, 2021 by John Wilcox, our Director of Finance. Approved by Chris Bromson, our Town Manager. Okay, we're gonna have, before we vote, it's a, it's a uh, obviously it's, a, it's a, uh, consent. a consent vote, but I just wanna make sure that we, I know you'd like just quickly with the project. Well, again, I, I commend uh, yeah. the Councilor Subcommittee on Leisure Services. Again, um, I, I wish more people would watch the meetings. Maybe we should have some fist fights and people would tune in. Um, <laughs> Cage matches, perhaps, or something. But I want Liz Davis on my team. That's what I've always said. Um, the bottom line here is um, they've identified some areas. And again, for the for all of the residents enjoying this winter, uh, this is going to, and they're going to do it through the library. They have procedures to do it. Um, Deb McCarthy's very excited because she loves to ice skate. So not only will there be uh, snowshoes for people to rent as part of like the musical rental, which again, I don't know many. Towns. I think we were one of the first under Jason at the library to do uh, um, rental of uh, musical instruments that kids otherwise would never have been able to afford or to participate in. So this will be part of that. We'll have snowman kits, snowshoes in all the different sizes, snow fort building supplies uh, at Central Library. And then we're going to be putting a temporary ice rink at Powder Hollow Park for residents as well. So just another uh, thing that you are all doing for your residents uh, this so, so real quick, Deputy Mayor, so, I mean, you're, you're, this has been some of your projects that... Yeah. Well, you know, Mike's a big enthusiast. I'll, I'll tell you, the Higgins Park was Matt Coppler's um, baby from, like, 2005. And finally, it's, it's coming to fruition. Um, the snowshoes, Mike said, you know, you can't just do stuff in the summer. You got to do stuff in the winter. So, you know, leisure has to accommodate. Because when I got on the council, I told Leisure the Committee this, that the Leisure Committee is my, probably one of the most important committees because it is really vital that people have things to do in their leisure time and what they do in their leisure time will define what the community is like. So with that being said, 
I'm going to get a pickleball racket. So you will see other things coming forward from leisure that we left on the table because we're waiting to see if the COVID funding can be used for them. There'll be some, some lighting in, in different places and some other things. But also, our staff does everything we ask them to do, and they do it thoroughly. We had a um, idea come from the private sector that it would be really nice to uh, put an air dome on the tennis courts at the annex. And they ran all the costs and the probability of doing this, well over $2 million, something that, you know, for us would be a referendum item. You know, it's, it's $30 a square foot. And, you know, I said to Donald, I said, you'd be better off with a pre-engineered building. You'd have something that's a little bit sturdier. It's something that at this time is not viable. But I guarantee you, maybe in 10 years, it may happen. But we do look at everything. So I don't want people to think that we just, you know, we don't look at things and bring everything forward to you, or we don't not look at things, that we thoroughly vet everything. And we want everyone to know that, you know, we are working on these things. So snowshoes can be gotten at the library and maybe I'll put my ice skates on. I don't know, I could walk down to Powder Holler Bob said he skated down there. I skated at the Brainerd Park one. So, like with other things, we're back to the future with we're the pools. We're back to the future the, again. <laughs> right, right. And I want to say, Adana, too, and you're not running, so it's appropriate. You're too modest. I talked to Matt Coppler uh, this weekend and asked him specifically about Higgins Park because you're always giving him credit. And he said, that was all Donna. So I want to, I, I want to, I just want the record to reflect that's what he told me. So that was the first thing I brought to the council, and everybody, they tore that thing apart, and I was like, okay but it sat there. So some things aren't ready today, but they're ready tomorrow. Thank you. There's any consent agenda. All those in favor of uh, say aye, raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions, 10 in favor, zero against. Motion passes. We move to item E, discussion resolution, request transfer funds for the demolition and removal of 327 Hazard Ave of $38,107. Resolve that in accordance with chapter six, section AF of the town charter, following transfers hereby made. To the, de to the Department of Public Works Building and Grounds Construction Services of $38,107 from the general fund contingency of $38,107. Certified the above funds are available as of October 7th, 2021 by John Wilcox, our Director of Finance, approved by our Town Manager, Chris Prompson. Second. By Councilor Molly, second by Councilor Mancini. Sure. Um, Public Works has been very good on, on this. Uh, this building is really, or potentially could be a source of blight, vandalism. We've seen other arson at uh, buildings that are abandoned. Um, so we've got a very good price to demolish it. Um, and it will obviate the need to be paying the electricity that's there. There were no other useful plans. We've checked with all of our boards and commissions and subcommittees. So this would be a good thing to remove. And we'll then decide uh, with the next council what we want to do with that property after. Yep. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Safraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. Councilor Ungeyer? Four. Count, um, Councilor Sakala? Four. Councilor Crisati? Four. Councilor Hemler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Muller? Four. That's 10 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item F under miscellaneous discussion resolution request to transfer funds to close fiscal year 2021. Resolved in the accordance with Chapter 6, Section AF of the Town Charter, the following tra transfer referred to as Attachment A is hereby made. Certification, I hereby certify the funds stated in Attachment A are available as of October 13, 2021. Created by our Director of Finance, John Wilcox, on October 13, 2021. By Councilor Mangini, seconded by Councilor Muller. This is the year-end housekeeping. Uh, the finance director, Mr. Wilcox, is available to answer questions, but I thought it would be an appropriate moment to commend him and his staff. He's been the recipient again this year of the Government Finance Officers Association. They issued a press release last week, and we've received it many, many years in the past um, for achievement for excellence in financial reporting. 
It's the highest form of recognition in governmental accounting and financial reporting. And I'll tell you, their main criteria is what we believe and what sometimes people uh, like to talk about and aspire to, but John and his staff have done it. And I think if we can pass the scrutiny and the audits done by Mr. Young, God bless him. I hope he's doing well out there. Uh, then I think we can we can we can bear any scrutiny. But one of their goals is, and it says, the report has been judged by an impartial panel to meet the highest standards of the program, which includes, and I think this is the most important criteria, demonstrating a constructive spirit a full disclosure to clearly communicate its financial story to potential users and residents. And that's what John has done, and that's what he continues to do. So thank you, John, and I commend you. Yeah. So thank you. Na name and ties, I want to make sure we gave you a chance to talk um, about, you know, because again, it's, I mean, you make finance exciting, right? I mean, <laughs> you really do. And, and also, I mean, I know your staff too. I mean, really, I mean, it, these kind of awards, we don't, you don't see often. So I just want, we want to make sure that you had a chance. John Wilcox, Director of Finance, and uh, yes, the, um, the the we have been per, uh, participating in the GFOA uh, program for a number of years. Um, it's a way to get an extra look at the um, at the financial statements and make sure we are producing um, something that uh, it, governmental accounting can be very confusing. And when you actually look at those financial statements. Um, sometimes they can confuse people, but um, hopefully the information is pre presented in an, in an open manner that people then can come and ask questions to me. If, if you know anybody's, I'm always available if anybody has any questions for them. So, any comments or questions for Councillor Hemlock? John, you and your staff, you rock. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions or comments? You know, again, John, you know your staff as well. I mean. Really, financial reporting is very, you're exactly right, whether it be even the private sector or the public sector. It's very, it's very confusing sometimes. It's very detailed, and you really do have to understand. Sometimes it's hard to make that very simple and transparent because it is complex information. So, again, congratulations to both you and your entire staff on this. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Is this two years' worth or one? Of in that transfer? Yeah. That's one year. It's one year. Okay, because we're, Joe and I are confused about how the agenda has it. I think it's fiscal year ended. I think fiscal it's year okay. ending 2021. Okay, we there we go. Sorry. Okay, yeah. we're all set. Thanks, thank John. Okay. Yeah. Any other That's questions right. or comments? Again, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sarraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. It's ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item G under miscellaneous request transfer of funds for Freshwater Dam Capital Improvement Project of $100,000. Resolve in accordance with Chapter 6, Section AF of the Town Charter, the following transfers hereby made. From the general fund, 100,000 general fund revenue appropriate fund balance to the uh, capital and non-recurring fund CIP revenue fiscal year 21-22, general transfers in freshwater dam training wall, uh, construction services $100,000, certified that the above funds are available as of October 13th, 2021 by John Wilcox, our Director of Finance and approved by our Town Manager, Chris Prompton. By Councilor Muller, second by Councilor Mangini. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mayor, as the council will recall, a couple of years ago you had appropriated, oh, just shy of uh, $500,000 in funding to uh, dredge um, the, the dam. Uh, thereafter, this had been on a list of, for capital improvement, a long-term uh, project we were going to do in perhaps four or five years. Um, the state, as it does, uh, goes out and inspects and investigates different dams and their safety. They identified this as having some areas of concern. We looked at it. It wasn't in risk of imminent failure, uh, but we, we moved up. This council moved up uh, in response because we like to work well with our state and federal partners. You moved it up and we funded it last year, full, probably four years, John can correct me, sooner uh, than later. But when the bid went out, again, because we are now victim of all of the different price increases and um, difficulty in obtaining contractors, we did get a low bidder. Uh, and uh, the bid is $100,000 more than we had appropriated. And again, we are under an order from the deep to accomplish this work. So we really have no choice but to do it. But it's appropriate. And I ask you that you support it. 
We do it every year. Right. But, but here it says Sorry, any qu questions for the town manager? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Safraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hamler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. That's 10 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Sheila, real quick, point of order. Sorry, on the last resolution on the page, that was for fiscal year 2021, but the actual top of the resolution says resolve approving transfer funds for closed fiscal year 2020. I think it's a typo. Do we have to re? We should probably amend the resolution. So, all right. So I know the actual resolution is 2021, but the actual title of the resolution says 2020. Right. Does this mean John loses the award? <laughs> <laughs> no, me, it's Joe gets it. <laughs> so, so, Sheila, I'll make sure. So, point order, we already vote on it. Do I have to make a motion to, to re? To re do you want to make sure I do it right? Yeah, I think you may, need to make a motion to amend should it. Should we wait after, a, a, after the end of the agenda? Just wait or do it right no, now? No, we should do it now. Do it now. Okay. Do it now. Okay, just I'll want to make, make sure. Motion. All right, so motion it's made by Councilor Mangini, yeah. seconded Second. by Deputy Mayor Suzak to again uh, amend our our, um, our uh, agenda to bring back up item um, F, uh, request for a transfer of funds of clo closure 2021 to make an amendment for a typo. Motion made by uh, Councilor Mangini, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. The on the top of the amendment, um, it says. I want to make sure I read it correctly. It's actually the uh, title of the uh, of the amendment. It says resolution approving transfer funds to close fiscal year 2020. It should say close close fiscal year 2021. I make an amendment to change 2020 to 2021. Does I have a second? Se second. Amendment made, second by Deputy Mayor Suzak. So again, all we're doing, everything else stays the same. And I'm gonna read the entire resolution, a resolution re approving transfer funds to close fiscal year 2021. So that's the amendment. Resolve that in accordance with chapter six, section eight F of the town charter, the following transfer referred to as attachment A is hereby made. Certification that the I hereby certified the funds stated in attachment A are available as October 13th, 2021 by John Wilcox, a director of finance, finance, October 13th, 2021. So now do I have a motion? The motion's been made on the amendment. Any discussion on the amendment? That mean all we're doing is changing 2020 to 2021. Hearing no discussion by a show of hands, all those in favor of the amendment. Opposed, abstentions, 10 in favor, zero against. Now is the motion read with the amendment, so the motion as amended. Does any discussion on the main motion as amended? Hearing on Sheila, roll call please. Councilor Riley. Yep. Four. Councilor Safraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. That's 10 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, we move on to item H. Request for uh, discussion resolution request to transfer funds for the Connecticut Office of Early Childhood Development Early Childhood Grant to the Enfield Child, Develop, Child Development Center at $388,880. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8 for the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made to the Enfield Child Development Center at $388,800 from the Child Day Care State Grant of $388,800. Certified the above funds are available as of October 6, 2021 by our Director of Finance, John Wilcox, and approved by our Town Manager, Chris Bromson. So by Councilor Mangini, seconded by Councilor Muller. Pretty straightforward, a grant that we, uh, it's great. It is, this is again, COVID money to offset some of the uh, import of COVID. Um, we've acted on it before, and the likewise with other grants, uh, Cindy is just asking that we allow the-, uh, the Which would be the uh, next agenda item, basically if it carries Correct, over, they're together right? that yep. it would carry over and we could expend them if they're not used in the so fiscal each year. Each and I are similar. And Kasha is available if there are any questions. Kasha, hi. Any you, any comments or questions since you're on? Good evening. No, I just have to add that this is our first on Clifton to OEP for various issues. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Shafraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. 
10 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Move the item I, discussion resolution. Discussion authorize, resolution authorizing unspent funds from the Office of Early Childhood Grant to be carried forward to fiscal year 2022. Whereas the Enfield Tri Chi Child Development Center received additional funds from the OEC in the amount of $388,800 for the state fiscal year 21-22. And whereas OEC allows these funds to be spent through state fiscal year 2022 to 2023. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the unsp any unspent funds at the end of fiscal year 2022 be carried forward. Submitted on October 8, 2021 by Cynthia Guerrero, our Director of Social Services. So moved. By yeah. Councilor Muller, second by Councilor Mangini. Again, this is just a continuation of the grant we just did. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Safraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer left left the room. Uh, Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item J, discussion resolution extending lease agreement for the NX room usage, whereas the leasing agreement between the Town of Enfield and the Opera House Players, Inc., also known as OHP, for rooms D222 and D220 in the Enfield Annex of 124 North Maple Street will expire on December 31st, 2021, whereas OHP has requested that the term of the lease agreement be extended for an additional period extend, expiring on December 31st, 2022. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield County Council authorize the town manager to sign the attached, the attached Second Amendment to the license agreement on, uh, prepared on October 5th, 2021, by Kasia Perciello, our assistant town manager. So moved. By Councilor Second. Man uh, Muller, seconded by Councilor Crisati. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know, I think, I don't know, because Kasia want to come, anything? Or? Yeah, Kasia's yeah. been the liaison uh, working with the Opros players. We had them in at the last meeting to discuss with them the terms of the uh, renewals. Um, Kasha can answer any questions. There are there is perhaps one change, but significantly uh, the annex is going to remain uh, the same agreement um, basically. But there is a change uh, to the purchase agreement, and she can talk about that in a moment. The one year renewal on, um, on the next High Street. Item. Yeah. So Kasha, anything on the annex agreement? No, nothing bad there. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Thank you, Kasha. Hearing on roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Safraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. Councilor Ungeyer? Four. Councilor Sakala? Four. Councilor Crisati? Four. Councilor Hemler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Um, Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Muller? Four. Ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item K under miscellaneous discussion resolution authorizing the town manager to enter in and sign the amendment to lease with option to purchase with the Opera House with the Opera House. Whereas the town and the Opera House Players Inc. entered in a two-year lease with the option to purchase at 100 High Street, and whereas the term of the lease expired on December 20, 31, 2020, and whereas the town and the Opera House Players Inc. amended the above noted lease and extended the expiration date to December 31st, 2021. Whereas the parties wish to extend the term of the lease for an additional one year period commencing on January 1, 2022 and ending on December 31st, 2022. Now, therefore, be it resolved the town manager, Christopher W. Bromson, is authorized to enter into and sign the second amendment to, to lease with option to purchase with the Opera House Players Inc. in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield, subject to review and approval by the town attorney, submitted on October 6, 2021, by the town manager's office. So moved. Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Mangini. Kasha, you have the floor, or Chris? Well, Kasha can tell you the one change uh, to the agreement, and then we can open up for questions. I'll have a comment or two. Go ahead, Kasha. Thank you. Okay, so the only uh, thing here is that this, uh, these agreements have an opt-out provision um, for the Opera House players uh, so that um, they, they still have their uh, purchase option in the lease. However, they also have an opt-out option if um, anything changes in their uh, long-term plan. Very good. Any questions or comments? I know Kosh was going in and out, but just for our, our benefit and the folks here, it remains the same, but they, they will now have an opt-out agreement. They, they have the right during the pendency of the year to purchase the property for a dollar. But if they find uh, something better in town or we can work with them for other um, facilities, they would have the right to opt out of it without any penalty. I will say there's been thoughtful 
talk between everybody on the council. I want the APROS players to know that we support them. The entire council does. We are going to work hard to make them a success. I know most all of us are going to be going to the Mamma Mia. I got my invitation. We're going to buy the tickets. But I want to assure them and their supporters that we stand behind them. We know how uh, important they are to Thompsonville. A lot of these monies we talked about tonight and the new $100 million trunch that came out by the governor, we may be able to assist them in some of the issues they have at the building. Up to $10 million we're going to be applying for. So Nelson's going to be on that. We'll continue the meetings. And I think we can work out some perhaps partnership so that their fundraisers will know perhaps the town is going to put up a certain amount and be able to access or leverage uh, state or federal funds that they can use perhaps in fundraising to show, look, we have this much commitment commitment, this much in the bank. And I just have a good feeling they're very committed people. They're very dedicated. They're very talented. I know this is going to be a success. I've seen, you know, their plays you all have. They are going to help with the revitalization of Thompsonville. They will be an integral part of it. When we brought the governor walking here, he was impressed. It's on his radar. Also, Congressman Courtney was impressed. All of you were. I remain committed. Kasha does as well. So I have great optimism for the future. Um, I would just also like to say before Kasha gets off the screen, she's a good sport. And she will be leaving on maternity leave. I think she would like to say goodbye to those who, the chief and Donna, and good luck to the rest. But I'll tell you, she's such a good sport. We went out, right, Bob? And uh, we were doing the ribbon cutting at Alcorn. And there is Kasha, eight months. She has her own basketball she's carrying around. And she's out there shooting hoops, swoosh. So she's one of the good ones. We were lucky to get her. We all, I know, wish her well in her maternity leave. And Kasha, with that, I'll let you conclude the last item on the agenda for this council. Thank you very much, Chris. I hope everyone can hear me because I'm going in and out a little bit. Uh, but it's been an honor working with all of you, and I'm really looking forward to coming back from leave and continuing my work with some of you, uh, Donna and uh, Carl, especially. I wish you the best, and thank you so much. Councillor Sakala? Just one comment. Um, I mean, I'm obviously going to support this resolution, but I, I do want it to be known that I, I do hope that the Opera House players do stay in Enfield, and I do hope that we can work something out um, to keep them here. Thank you. Anyone else? Roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Safraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. It's 10 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. We move on to item 16, public communications. Would anyone like to speak for the public uh, from before the council at this time from the public? Anyone like to speak? Welcome, name and address, thank you. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, it's Jennifer Briette, 83 Park Avenue. Um, I didn't plan on speaking on this, but since Councillor Sakala brought it up, um, yes, Summer Street does have a speeding problem. But I don't know if just a speed, the speed sign would work, because at the corner of Summer and Park, there's also a problem with nobody stopping at that four-way intersection. So it may be something that requires more police presence there. Okay, so the reason that I did come tonight was I wanted to speak about masks. Let me preface by saying I am not a doctor or a researcher. I don't have access to anything other than Google and other search engines. My expertise is in accounting, and I won't pretend I know more than the epidemiologists or infectious disease doctors. I, be <clears throat> I began my research trying to find peer-reviewed studies proving that mask wearing was harmful to children. I was able to find one letter published in the Journal of American Medical Association Pediatrics that claimed mask wearing was dangerous. It claimed that mask wearing increased carbon dioxide, possibly to dangerous levels in children. The problem is the study had critical flaws in its methodology. A retraction was published a mere 16 days later. The same authors of this paper recently published another claiming vaccines killed two people for every three deaths prevented. Obviously, this is not the case and does little to boost their credibility. 
We know masks work to slow or prevent the spread of COVID-19. One just needs to look at the rates of transmission in areas of the country with no mask mandates. A report from Arizona shows that schools without a mask mandate were three and a half times more likely to have a COVID-19 outbreak, outbreak than those that required universal masking from day one. Average of pediatric cases were lower in counties with a mask requirement, 16.32 per 100,000 a day, versus no mask requirement at 34.85 per 100,000 a day. A poll conducted found that 64% of respondents support government mask mandates, mandates in all public places, and 69% support masks mandates for mask wearing in schools. We cannot allow the vocal minority to strip the protections provided by wearing a simple mask. Connecticut has been found to be the safest state during COVID-19 in part to Governor Lamont's mask mandates. And an analyst from Wallet Hub has said, the safer this state is, the more it can get its economy back on track. Now I've heard people quote the survival statistics. The recovery rate is between 97 and 99.75%. But what are the long-term effects? Survival isn't the only measure of this disease. Long haulers account for approximately 10% of those that contract COVID-19. Symptoms of long haulers include coughing, ongoing debilitating fatigue, body aches, joint pain, shortness of breath, loss of taste or smell, difficulty sleeping, headaches, and brain fog. It is not known if these symptoms will be permanent yep. or permanent damage is done. Yeah, sorry. You, you, have, you have to come back. Sorry, it's three minutes. If you just The wait. right to swing your fist stops at another person's nose. As such, your right to live maskless in public stops when you are endangering others' lives by facilitating the spread of a communicable disease. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Any else like anyone else like to speak for the council? You can come. I'm sorry. You can cut, you can come back if you like. You sure? Okay. Yep. Uh, declare public communications closed. Item 17. Any councilor communications? Councilor Ungar. I just wanted to publicly thank Donna and Carl for all their years of service to Enfield. You two are amazing. Uh, it's a privilege to know you. Um, I'm hoping you'll just be a phone call away, but I'll miss seeing you frequently. Um, don't change your number. Yeah, don't change your number. <laughs> you have my special number. Yeah. <laughs> and with so the elections coming up, I wish, you know, everyone the best. And I wanted to especially thank the two Chris's, Chris Bromson for all his hard work, his whole team, and also Chris Dresick, um, all that he's done through this pandemic. And um, I highly respect both you men. And thank you. Thank you. Councilor Grisotti. Yeah, I, I meant to mention this before. Um, First of all, to uh, Joe Bosco, uh, we hope that you have a, a a real speedy recovery, and we've been thinking about you. And uh, you know, best best of health to you. And uh, I'm going to see you back here soon, Joe. And then also, um, our friend on the Commission on Aging, uh, I want to just give a, uh, a shout out to Tim Slade, who's head of our senior home repair. Um, He's, uh, we're wishing you a speedy recovery um, also. So uh, for, for both of you, let's get well so fast. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll just end by closing again. I think it's been a, a amazing two years. I mean, we've battled through it. It's you know, no one signed up to battle through a pandemic. And, you know, we, we really never slowed down. We shut down for about a, you know, it's hard to remember back to March of 2020. But again, everyone on this council should be proud of themselves, both parties. We never stopped working. We really never missed. We actually, I think, had more meetings than we did in prior. We actually, we actually had all those six to seven, which we, you know, again, let the public know what was going on. All those, all that's on the manager's website. So we did everything in public, and then everything was put on a website if people couldn't make the meeting. And that continues as uh, you know. Hopefully, the next council will do the same. You know, the staff has been fantastic. You know, you guys are professional. You know, worked hard, um, worked you know well with the public, well with the council, and you know, so it's 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 a it takes a lot, you know, everyone knows sort of has to play their role. 
and everyone did, and they did it great because they cared about the town of Enfield, our entire staff. So, I mean, everyone from folks out in the field to you guys in here, you know, this was beautiful as we came back here in September of last year, you know, and everyone else still was worried about, you know, we came back into the building and we had public folks from the public to come here because we felt it was important that people still had some access to government as everything was going on. And again, the thing that I'm most proud of with everyone on this council, both Republicans and Democrats, we held firm to our form of government. We could have used the emergency excuse and we didn't. We, we have a town manager and a council form of government and we never, never wavered from that. Never wavered from that because that's what our charter says and that's what we followed. And I think that's to me, I know that's gonna be nothing maybe in the scheme of things as we look forward, but it's a big deal in my opinion. It's a big deal because everyone was, again, Charter says what we had to do, and we lived by it. So I think that's tri tribute to your staff, tribute to everyone on the council, and it's been it's been a, I mean it really has been a long two years, but um, all the projects that are ongoing is really amazing, and we took it as a, we looked at it as an opportunity to actually get some things done, as opposed to sitting back and waiting. And I think again tribute to everyone here. You know again, uh, Councilor Faraz has been a friend for a long time. I know he's not going anywhere, but again. I mean, I can't say anything better than everyone I said about you tonight. A man of integrity, a friend of mine. I consider him a colleague. I've been a friend. And um, I know he won't be gone for long. And Deputy Mayor Suzak. And I think really the entire council. The people don't realize how much work gets done outside of these meetings. And I know Councilor Sakala mentioned it with the, with the uh, um, uh, joint facility meeting. Again, a joint meeting with both Board of Ed members, Republican, Democrat, council members, members from the public, staff, and look at what all that committee's accomplished in two years. You got the JFK building, it's coming out fantastic. You know, you have the roofs now as a referendum, you have roads, you have the, we don't even talk about it anymore, the dump that's gonna, the project with the dump that's gonna be going on, the improvements there. They're looking, the performance, contract. Uh, yeah, the performance contract. I mean, I'm sure I'm missing some stuff. You know, even the green banks that we were working through is we will bring that back when the time comes. So this committee has done a tremendous job you know, and Deputy Mayor Sue has been her, you know, her passion before all this. And uh, you know, I can just tell as the mayor, I'm going to miss her because she works extremely hard, as does everybody. But people don't realize all the other work that goes on. And that's why, uh, you know, and again, we vote in public. Our resolutions are one page resolutions and we vote them in public. And um, there's something to be said about that in this day and age. So again, staff did a fantastic job. And um, so whatever happens, the town's in good shape with you guys. And uh, again, uh, like I said, it's been an honor to serve the town as mayor. Whether you agree with me or not, it's been an absolute honor. And I thank all of you. Motion to adjourn. Motion, Motion to adjourn. Right, Councilor Sprott, the second by Deputy Mayor Sudak. All those in favor? Aye. Your last two motions. Good night, everyone. Have a great evening. <laughs>